Hello YouTube, uh, Devin here again. This is my second video of today, the one uh, after the one I redid. And this is on, if you haven't seen one of these, uh, you're probably living under a rock. Uh, it's the American ACH helmet. Now we're going to get a couple... There's a lot of helmets that look like this, especially from the United States, but we're going to we're going to separate those out right now because there there is differences and a lot of people are using these names interchangeably, which is wrong. Um first of all, uh there is a difference between an ACH, which is stands for Advanced Combat Helmet, which is this, and the Mitch helmet, which is Modular Integrated Communications Helmet. Now, the Mitch helmet came out first. It came out like two years, some sources say three, years before the ACH. Now, the ACH came out in 2003. So in 2000, the Mitch helmet came out. And Mitch stands for Modular Integrated Communications Helmet. And it's roughly the same shape as this. Um, the easiest way to tell the difference between an ACH and a Mitch is the ACH's rear bolt. Uh, so the bolt is right above my thumbnail here, all right? The Mitch bolts are higher up, all right? So the ACH bolts are all about an inch from the bottom of the shell here, about an inch, okay? The Mitch bolts are higher up. They're gonna be inch and a half, two inches up, depending on what size you get, okay? That's really the, the easiest difference. Other than that, they cover pretty much the same shape and they offer the same protection which is 3a all of these helmets are 3a and um uh sometimes uh earlier versions of the mitch the ears are flared out way more uh, to accommodate uh comms periods uh comms of that time uh around 2000 comms were a lot bulkier than they are now so uh, the ear pieces uh tend to be the ear flares tend to be out more to accommodate such as that so those are the two easiest ways to tell a Mitch from an ACH, all right? Now, there's a version of the ACH that came out, well, in this full full size cut. These are all the full cut designs that I'm talking about. There's obviously uh, gunfighter ones that have half ears, and there's um, high cut special forces ones that don't have the ear flares at all. Um, but these ones, I'm just talking about the full cut helmets. So, and then there is the TBH, which stands for tactical ballistic helmet all right or the ACH2 all right TBH2 ACH2 and all that those are is they kind of rework the resin and the weave and everything so it's about each size weighs about a uh sorry not each size a size large uh TBH2 or ACH2 will weigh about a pound less than a regular ACH um that's really the only difference between the TBH2 and the regular ACH. All the mounting points are the same. Um, they're about the same thickness. A uh, little bit thinner probably. But other than that, they're the same as the ACH. So, now there is another contender for this helmet. And that is the ECH, which is replacing the ACH. Yes, a lot of you probably haven't heard about this. Uh, but the ACH is being replaced... Uh, by an ECH and the ECH is a different ballistic fiber and it's a lot of um, high density thermoplastic resin uh, the helmet shell is made out of rather than layers of Kevlar so now now that we got that out of the way we can actually get into the video of the ACH now we're gonna quickly cover some of the features of the ACH because you can find these pretty much anywhere I'm gonna talk about the history of the ACH so, but before we do that, we're going to talk about the features of, this a of the ACH. Now, the ACH here it has its cover on it, and underneath it, I did something that a lot of people don't do, is I have a thousand denier cover underneath it just to protect the helmet shell. Um, the paint tends to chip off these, which actually is very bad. It ruins the IR capabilities of this helmet. So, now, all the ACHs are going to have mounting points, okay? There's a difference between the Army and uh, the Marine Corps used ones. The Marine Corps used uh, ACHs for the uh, MARSOC for a long time, all right? And the Navy and the Marine Corps ones will have the three-hole mounts, all right? Whereas all of the Army and the Air Force ones will have the one-hole mounts, like this. So, um, 
that's about it for as far as the night vision variances goes. I could get into the tons of different mounts and stuff the army used, but most of them are like the Notaros Rhino mounts. So uh, there's a lot of different light attachments. Pretty much everybody across every branch that had an ACH that got issued a light, got a Surefire or a Streamlight. Uh, Navy and the Marine Corps went more towards the Streamlights, where uh, the Army and the Air Force went more towards Surefire. Um, the cover... Uh, is held on with Velcro retention straps that you strap to the discs uh, in the helmet. See like that one right there underneath the pad. Um, and it's held in place by the chin strap too. So you put your helmet cover on and then you route your chin strap through the holes in the uh, helmet cover. Now this is a late style uh, ACH with the x Snape chin strap. This helmet is made by Gentex. Um, there's a sticker on one of the ears here. Uh, but I didn't want to move it. I didn't want to take the cover off to... Yeah, there's there's the the sticker. Uh, you probably can't see it all that well because of my lighting. But it says uh, Helmet, Advanced Combat, NSN, and then it says Gentex Corporation. Now, I like the X-Nape a lot more than the H-Nape. It's a lot more stable. Uh, this one, though, uh, the Army standardized on uh, Frontline Combat has the X-Nape. Uh, not the X-Nape. I mean the H-Nape because you, uh, in 2007, they came out with this big uh, Kevlar pad that you would uh, would attach to this part of the H-Nape. And it would protect uh, your lower skull and the top of your spine from uh, shrapnel and blast. So, But I like this, uh, the X-Nape more. It's a lot more comfortable. So, um, Other than that, you can pretty much find hundreds of different chin straps and stuff for these. But the standard is the H-Nape. Um, this is a later one, though, uh, kind of a commercial sale one. Uh, this one isn't actually a commercial sale. It was an export to Australia, where they wear the X-Snape. So, but I got a hold of it somehow. So, and it's just, I bought it in a lot of ACHs. Uh, a lot of, like, 10 ACH helmets that were new. And uh, two of them had these Gentex X-Snapes on them. It turns out they were being sent to uh, other countries. So it's an actual military helmet, but made in the United States, but it was going to a different country. And now, the pads in these helmets are all held in with these discs. Uh, Velcro, they're glued in um, to the shell. Uh, you can peel them off if you really wanted to, but then um, they're there to hold in the uh, cover and the seven pad Zorbium Action Foam, uh, or Zap pads as uh, made by Team Wendy, and they're uh, dual layer foam. It's kind of a harder layer in the back, so underneath, and then a softer layer on the top. Um, and according to the, the guide at the U.S. Army Field Manual, you can't use this helmet. This helmet isn't approved for use with anything less than the seven pads that are in here, and you could wear them in any combination you want, uh, as long as all seven pads are in the helmet shell, you're, you're allowed to wear it. And I normally have the front two horizontal and the back two vertical so I still have a channel to let air through. Now I don't like these ACH pads. Um, they get way 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 too hot and stinky and sweaty in the summer and in the winter uh, they get way too hard and they fall off these velcro discs and they're just really uncomfortable. They transfer too much shock into your head I think um, and they don't breathe very well. So I, I like the suspension more. I like a good suspension system more than, than the pad system. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. You guys are entitled to whatever opinion you want. I also like the suspension over the pads because these have to be replaced every six months, regardless if you wear the helmet or not. People tend to forget that. Every six months, you have to get new pads, and new pads aren't cheap. So... um. Other than that, standard specs about the shell is uh, it's 3A rated, which they means it'll stop a 9mm FMJ, uh, small shrapnel, everything like that. It's a pretty good design as far as shape goes. Um, it was. Uh, now we're going to get into uh, the history of this this helmet here. So I'll just leave it at a nice nice angle like that, so you guys can look at it while I'm I'm explaining to. It. I'll probably rotate a little bit so you can see every angle of the helmet while I'm explaining the history before it. All right. So, this helmet came out in 2003. It was first fielded in 2003 to replace the PASGT helmet in Army stocks. Now, the difference between this helmet and a PASGT is that, for one, it has no bill. Um, so, that improves um, vertical uh, visibility. Uh, it doesn't really uh, 
hinder, uh, having the bill doesn't really make your face uh, at any more of a risk of injury, really, because this helmet still sticks out far enough. Um, and uh, it was trimmed down a little bit around the skirt. Other than that, it's pretty much the same shape as a Pazgat. So, um, there's a lot of companies that make these as well. Uh, it was produced by Gentex Specialty Plastics. Uh, MSA, uh, MSA Galay, uh, Galay manufactured a few of these, um, there's, there's just a ton of companies out there, there's like 14 or 15 companies, those are just a few of the really big ones that I know of that, uh, produced this revision, made a bunch of them too, uh, a lot of the revision ones are made in other countries though, so, Rabintex makes one, makes these as well, um, Rabintex is an Israeli company, uh, very well known for making body armor, um, but these came out in 2003, uh, they're now officially being phased out as of 2014, this is 2017 by the way, this year, just to date this video, uh, 2014 they started being replaced by the ECH, and I actually have one of those, but I'm not sure if it's legal to do a video on yet, I'm still doing some research on it, um, so please, uh, leave a comment if that's something you'd want to see, because if I get enough support I'll just do it anyways, so... Um, I tamed, by the way, if this is like any federal people watching this video, I tamed that ECH perfectly legally. Uh, I actually know a guy that, uh, works here in Minnesota, uh, that's where I live, uh, for 3M. Uh, he's a lead engineer. So, he had a bunch of them for testing down here at 3M in Woodbury. So, I got one through him, uh, one that was not part of military stocks and not part of military contract. So... Just for reference, sorry to go on a rant there, everyone who's watching this video to get any historical significance, I just had to do that just in case to get myself out of any legal troubles I might have. So, we'll get back to it. Now, first of all, these came out in 2003, and uh, they had woodland and desert camouflage uh, before uh, the digital came along. A lot of these you can uh, see early pictures uh, with the woodland digital, stuff like that now. This helmet was used by every branch of the military, except for the Marine Corps. The Marine Corps decided to keep the Pazgat shell, um, but they changed the liner system up. So it has uh, pads like this. Now before it had some weird suspension where it had like a mesh crown and a normal leather sweatband like you can uh, find on a lot of helmets and stuff like that. But then they later switched to the, the action pads just like this and they have they have an X-Nape chin strap. Um, the early Marine Corps ones were green, later they switched to this color called Mud Brown on their lightweight helmet. Um, and, uh, all the a uh, ACHs that went to the Marine Corps were painted in Coyote Brown or Mud Brown. Uh, one of those two, they're very close. Um, the, air, uh, the early ACHs uh, were painted in olive green. Um, all the later ones are painted in foliage green, which is more gray. It's like this dark gray color in the uh, ACU pattern. They're all painted that now. Um, the Air Force used this, uh, the Navy used this, and um, the Army used this. So, uh, but once again, you can tell the Navy versions apart, uh, the Navy and Marine Corps versions apart from uh, the Air Force and Army ones because they have three hole mount shroud instead of one hole in the front. So, these helmets proved to be uh, a lot more liked by the troops than the old Pazgat because it's a lot more comfortable. Uh, the maintenance on them is higher than a Pazgat though, which a lot of people didn't like. Uh, still offered the same protection as the Pazgat, but this helmet is just like the M1. It's influenced now modern helmets all over the world. There's a lot of countries that are switching to these. England in particular is going from their weirdo helmet designs to an ACH style. Um, Russia now has uh, their 6B7 and 6B47 is very similar to this. Um, so America's kind of pulled another magical rabbit out of their hat as far as helmets go. Uh, and uh, started uh, influencing uh, other countries again all over. Right? It'll probably be just like with the M1 all over Europe where countries are, you know, when they had a whole bunch of M1 clones come out after World War II and stuff like that, I would most of the world right right now uses a Pazgat clone. I would not be surprised if the most of the world in ten years has an ACH clone. 
helmet. So, at least. Um, so, this uh, helmet here in particular is a brand new uh, ACH size large. Um, it's it's a good helmet overall. I'd say it's it's probably the gold standard as far as helmets go. And I've used it as a comparison in a lot of my videos. So, this this is pretty much the standard. So... It's hard to really think of a more, a better Kevlar helmet out there than this because it's, you know, out there. They're around, they're cheap. You can find them for $100, uh, usually in pretty good condition. If you want one brand new, you can pay upwards of $200. Um, they're infinitely customizable to anyone's options. Uh, they work very well in most climate conditions. I would tend to stray away from this if you live in like a desert or if you live in a place where you get lots and lots of winter like I do. Um, I would tend to stray away from this design. But if you live in like uh, mid United States, this is probably the best best helmet you could go out there if you're looking for one. So um, that's really all that I have to say about this helmet as far as general overviews go. Uh, this will probably be a subject for uh, something I'm working on, which is um, my what I would like to call insert helmet name the movie uh where it's going to be like a half hour to one hour video of every technical aspect every type of design every company that manufactured the helmet all of those for a certain number of helmets um that i have in my collection where you can where i take it all the way from where it was an idea all the way to where it's being replaced now so, uh, if that's something you would be interested in seeing, and please uh, leave a comment about that too. Now, um, uh, I encourage you guys on this video uh, to please help me out by um, putting down any information you have on the ACH. Um, I don't want you to just state blah, 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 3A and everything like that. I did all that in this video. The, the information I'm really looking for is I'm looking for somebody to make a list of every manufacturer of the ACH. If you could do that for somebody's reference, that would be great. Um, I'm going to try to put one together as well. Uh, but if I put one in the comments um, and you happen to have one that isn't on that list from a company that isn't on that list, uh, message me first and I'll do some homework on it. And um, if I give it the green light, go ahead and throw it in there. I'll revise the list if you want everything else like that um but until then um i'm gonna end this video here it's a bit of a longer video i had to rant and i had to throw some legal stuff in there obviously uh, i had to throw a lot of uh, uh prompts in there to get you guys to respond to certain things i very much hope to hear from you guys on this um this is a very common helmet i have a lot of likes and a lot of dislikes about this helmet but once again it is all just my opinion so Hopefully you guys like this video. If you're new to the channel, once again, I thank you so much for watching this video and I encourage you to subscribe. If you're one of my new subscribers, I really, really appreciate it. The channel has just exploded in the last couple days. It's almost doubled in subscribers. And I thank you so much for that support and everything like that. So thank you so much and hopefully I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.